views and opinions expressed in this program are those of the participants and do not necessarily reflect the views of BronxNet or the program underwriters. Hi, welcome to Mission BX. Mission BX is a collaboration with, between BronxNet and the Center for Bronx Nonprofits at Hostos Community College. Mission BX is a show that shows you what nonprofits are working here in the Bronx. And today, we're at part of the solution, lovingly called POTS. So come and visit with us and learn about the wonderful work people are doing here on Webster Avenue. I'm here because really times are getting very tough. The landlord wanted to kick me out from my apartment. Well, I was living in the shelter, you know, back and forth from shelter to shelter. You can have your good days and you can have your bad days. I left a very violent relationship. I packed up my van with my children and we journeyed to New York. In and out of institutions, in and out of rehabs, in and out of programs. There was times I wanted to just get high and not wake up because the pain was so bad. Hi, welcome everybody. I'm here today at POTS, part of the solution, with Christina Hansen, who's the executive director. And she's going to tell us about what they do in this place. But I bet you could get a hint if you looked mm -hmm. around. So uh, we'll be seeing a lot of the activity here. But Christina, tell us about part of the solution. But actually, before you do, um, I'm going to tell you that when I first got this job, a friend of mine said, who lives on Long Island, not connected to the Bronx, said, do you know about this place called Potts? So you are very much known outside of the Bronx even, but tell us what you do. That's great to hear. So POTS is a one-stop shop, um, and we serve individuals and families in our community um, who are low income and in need of services. So um, as you can see, one of our services is a food pantry. That's where we're standing here today is our food pantry. Um, and we also have a community dining room. We offer showers, mail, haircut, clothing, and we offer next step services, which include uh, access to employment, case management, legal services for prevention of eviction, immigration services, uh, and something we call our comprehensive case management program. So how many people go through POTS in a typical day, in a typical week? Absolutely, yeah. We think every day we have about 700 to 800 people coming through our doors, um, either for a hot meal, for groceries, or for any of the other services that I mentioned. So during the morning, the people come, and how does that all work? Yeah, so... They come uh, here. They, they come here. So anybody who, uh, in the morning, uh, we offer, uh, you know, our case management, our showers. On some days of the week, we have our hair, uh, haircuts available. Um, people come in. We open our doors at 8 a.m. Um, often there's a big crowd of people waiting outside at that time and we uh, triage them. We ask them what they're here for, separate them out into the different programs, the different reasons they might be here. If they're new to POTS, um, we have everybody talk to a case manager to do an intake so that we can understand what's going on in their lives, what might their needs be. A lot of the time somebody may come here because they're hungry uh, and they need a meal, but in fact that's a symptom of some other challenges that they're facing. And so our case managers, the, the whole point is to make sure that we're access offering people as many different programs as possible and that's uh, how we start. So at first you'll talk to a case manager, uh, have a full intake, a full assessment, a conversation about you know, what it is that you're looking for and, and what we might be able to help you with. And then you'll get access to the program, be it the food pantry or um, access to public assistance or public benefits, um, eviction prevention, showers, anything I mentioned earlier. So how many staff people do you have here to service? We have, 30, we have 35 staff. Um, and we also rely on volunteers every single day. Um, we have nearly as many volunteers as we have staff members on site every day. And I, I noticed that when we were walking around that there were 
um, college students or high school students? So how do you have a program with certain schools or how does that work? So we have a, a volunteer coordinator, um, and she is a great, does a great job of signing up uh, schools, institutions, also individuals who are interested in volunteering here. There are a few local schools that have, we work with a lot, um, and there are some that just come one off when they have the availability, and we're happy to work with volunteers of any kind, whether or not they would like to come repeatedly over a course of a year or, or just um, come once. And so how long has POTS been in existence, and how did it start? Sure, so POTS was founded in 1982. Um, by uh, a priest, a nun, and a layperson who were looking to um, provide a place of community uh, for people that they saw on the street. They worked at Covenant House, a well-known nonprofit in New York City, uh, and they wanted to create, a, in a way, a community center for people to come to. And so it started as a soup kitchen. That was our beginnings okay. on Fordham Road. Um, and they provided lunch every single day, um, a hot meal. And at the time, it was quite literally soup. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, over time, uh, through knowing clients, understanding them, the services grew. Um, and uh, that's the whole thing, is we want to listen to our clients hear what it is that they're looking for and make sure as much as we're able, we're addressing the needs that they have so that they can live strong and healthy lives. So you deal with adults, but also children, I would just families. Yes, absolutely. So when we first started, um, it really was uh, much more of an adult-focused, uh, single adult-focused organization. Um, and it also was much more homeless focused. But as time has gone on, um, and just recognizing that the kind of need we have in our community, only about 10% of our clients at this time are homeless. Uh, the rest um, are living in apartments, you know, just like you and I, right. um, but just have financial needs that, that, you know, they can't meet their ability to pay rent or their ability to get food every month. Um, it's, it's too much. And so we're here to catch people when they, when they are having those troubles and then also help to talk to them about what it is that's next. How can we make sure that we're not just putting a Band-Aid on it, mm -hmm. but um, addressing their futures. And we talked a little bit before about the, what I guess we would call the working poor, people mm -hmm. who have jobs. So mm -hmm. there are people who come here and have jobs but still can't. It's not a living wage. Absolutely. So the average apartment, uh, a one-bedroom apartment in the Bronx is $1,000 a month. Um, and if you're making minimum wage, even if you're working a full-time job at minimum wage, you really can't cover that plus food plus all of your other needs. Uh, it, it doesn't work. Um, and then the other thing to address is that um, a lot of work at this point isn't full-time. You don't have a standard full-time job. Um, it may be part-time or it may be temporary. Maybe you're, you're, for example, a home health aide has jobs for, you have it for a period and then that Right. that job finishes, the person gets healthy or whatnot. Um, and so there's no consistency to certain types of employment, uh, especially for many people we work with. And that, that's where um, the need comes from. And how did you get here? Um, so I have sort of a mixed background in, in finance and in nonprofits. Um, I, I served in the Peace Corps in Senegal, and it was a really oh. wonderful experience. But at the time, I really wanted to uh, do that sort of work here uh, in the U.S. I just felt like the impact could be so much greater. Um, and so um, when the opportunity arose, um, I joined the team. I was originally the director of finance and operations, and, uh, and now I'm the executive director. How great. Good for you. And so, you. so tell me just a little bit about this is a new building, but mm -hmm. you have another building. So, so just tell us a little bit about that. Great. So we've been located here on Webster Avenue since 1986. Um, we own the building next door. And that's where we did all of our services until 2011, when we were, we were fortunate to move into this beautiful building that we have here. And uh, at the time we moved in, we were able to expand our services just to a huge degree. Um, and we've more than tripled the number of clients that we serve each year. But we're looking to expand again. Um, we're moving back into the space in the building that we own next door. Uh, we're conducting a capital campaign for that purpose and the idea is to deepen our connection with the clients. So instead of uh, expanding uh, the food program or the, the dining room, which are extremely important to us and we will always make sure are central, we're expanding the next step services. So we'll be providing uh, uh, legal services, we'll be providing comprehensive case management services and then the cornerstone of it is uh, we'll be adding an employment training program where we'll hopefully have about 120 to 150 people coming through each year having a full course of job training. I have to say thank you. Thank you for letting us come but also thank you for what you do. It's, <laughs> it's so valuable and it, it's so and despite all, any of the changes going on in the Bronx this is so much the core of, of the kind of work that has to be done so thank you. Thank you. Uh, it's, it, you know, we think that um, 
that basically, you know, this type of thing is always, is, is, there's that need is often there. And, um, and yeah, there have been so many wonderful changes in the Bronx. It's really a wonderful time to be working and living in this community. Mm -hmm. It's, I can't say how much I've gotten out of, out of being here. Um, but unfortunately, there is still this need um, and, and we're yeah. here for, for those who have that need. Well, we have to cut to a break, but then um, we'll come back and talk to some other people who are here. So thanks. Great. Thank you. Welcome back, everybody. Here we are again at POTS, and this time we're talking to Teresa and Chris, and they are going to tell us what they do here at POTS. Yeah, so we both work in day-to-day -day services, um, providing showers, clothing, haircuts, and mail. Um, and we are open Monday through Friday. Um, we help any of the clients that come to our door. Um, yeah, so I run the clothing program and the holiday store as well. Oh, tell us about the Holiday Store. <laughs> oh, yeah, the Holiday Store. Um, it's actually a time uh, for families to come in with kids that need toys for Christmas. Um, and specifically, as um, it gets closer to Christmas and people aren't able to sort of afford toys, this becomes a way for those families to you know, provide some holiday cheer. Which is wonderful. Yeah. yeah, the Bronx is very generous about. I'm sure they have things in other boroughs, but the Bronx <laughs> seems that everywhere you turn, somebody is helping their children. So it's wonderful. But talk to me a little bit, Chris, about the mail situation because that's very interesting. The mail is um, one of our biggest programs that we have within the day-to-day -day services because we receive over a thousand clients use our address as a mailing address. A lot of our clients, you know, feel safer and more secure, us sorting and organizing their mail, keeping it at a secure mm -hmm. spot, or others don't have an uh, address to put. And people don't know when it comes to benefits, that's one of the main priorities is having a secure address. So they use a POTS as a mailing address, and they're able to get all their mail that's very important, important documents at a convenient location. That's an amazing part of making people feel secure. I mean, there, there are, it's interesting because there are all kinds of insecurities that you're dealing with, food mm -hmm. insecurity and clothing insecurity. And, uh, but, but I also know that, that there's a vision here of, of moving people beyond the zones of insecurity into helping them in other ways uh, get their life in a, in a uh, not, not in order exactly, but giving themselves more opportunities. So what are yeah. the next steps that you see? Yeah, so right now, especially, we've been pushing to sort of connect the population that we do see on a regular basis, especially those that are facing chronic homelessness or yeah. addiction or anything like that, um, and to connecting them with our next step services uh, on the second floor. So whether that be getting food stamps or SNAP, uh, whether that be applying for health insurance or seeing a social worker, um, we're trying to sort of push our clients and connect them with the resources that they can use um, to find employment and seek uh, health insurance and different things like that. Yeah, which is, which is, so it, it's it's one stop shopping in some ways for people <laughs> for <laughs> for help. So, and how many people are doing what you two do? It's just us two. Yes. <laughs> and how many people do you work with, do you see? 
Oh, we see you like around average on a daily basis, maybe 30 to 40. Yeah, and that would be for like showers, showers. and then people yeah. are always coming in for mail, mm -hmm. um, for clothing. We always see um, just a wide variety of people that need clothing, um, whether that be through the shower program, where we're offering on Mondays for our shower clients uh, a pair of pants and a shirt, mm, nice. um, or that be on like our normal clothing days of Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Um, so you're just constantly seeing an influx of people who need different resources. And so you accept you accept donations from people. Just put a little plug in for that <laughs> in the show. Yes, so. starting in January, we will okay. be opening That's up for uh, clothing donations. That's great to yeah. know. And how did you two get involved, not together, but how did you two get involved here? How long well, have you been I, here? I've been a Bronx native my whole life. I know this community. Okay. Um, it's very close to me. It is home. So mm -hmm. being part of POTS is really helping me give back to the community. I've been born and raised here my mm -hmm. whole life. Um, it's something that I wanted to get involved and I was able to through internship and then from oh, the internship great. being able to um, give back to the community and actually fulfilling my position as a day-to-day -day service manager. That's wonderful. Yeah, what and about you? I'm actually not from the Bronx. I'm from Tennessee, uh, which is which slightly is so farther. To the <laughs> yeah, uh, uh, I'm from Memphis, and so I joined a program after college, and they sent me here uh, for a year, and I was I've been able to fulfill um, in this uh, new position in day to day, um, working with the clients and clothing and connecting people to differ different services. So you're here for a year or how much longer? Yeah, I'm here for like the next couple months and however much longer after that. <laughs> yeah. And how is that, how has that transition been? I, I've really enjoyed it. Like I love being in the city and I love the environment I'm working in and the people I work with and the work I'm doing right now. Which is wonderful. And do you, do you live in the Bronx as well? Yes, I do. And so that's that's a big that's a big change yeah, from so. And Potts is is very is certainly an environment that's very well known, and that people and you you have the sense the, of a real family here that people are. Um, we do, we do. We have a lot of clients. Like even they'll move from Florida. We've had and um, just starting going back to the mailing. Oh, you know, we want to start our lives back in New York City right. because they they feel more, you know, opportunity in New York City and then being pots giving them so much other opportunities to connect the dots, such as the mail. Okay, now I'm moving, I don't have a place to live, but mm -hmm. I want to start receiving my mail here. To we start have, establishing it And that small little step makes a big difference because going back to helping with the case management work where it comes to SNAP benefits or public assistance benefits, even though they don't have a place to live, they still could get those benefits and they could receive those notifications through us. And that's, like I said, it's a small step, but it starts getting the ball moving. It's also, you notice as soon as you come in or if you come into different floors, there's, there's a real sense of people talking to each other, of people, I'm sure that, that for people seeing the two of you, yeah. being so familiar, um, that, that makes it I think that really easier. does sort of help the environment of POTS and sort of no one's, sort of there's not like that boundary of like, oh, I'm too afraid to talk to you, mm -hmm. but really sort of inviting people in and that's really the mission of POTS is to be that loving community to um, to whoever comes to our door, yeah. That That is a great way, we have to take a break now, but that is a perfect way to, to end this conversation. Thank you both, thank you for talking to us and thank you also for doing what you do. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. I am what hunger looks like in America. I am an eight-year-old girl who's not excited for the last day of school. Because this may be the last time I'll have lunch. Till September. I am a single father of two who works three part-time jobs. And that's still not enough to put food on the table. I was created by artificial intelligence from faces of the one in eight Americans who struggle with hunger. Feeding America, 200 food banks strong. For me, what sets us apart is the spirit of the organization and how much we value the work that we do and how we deliver that. 
anybody can do applications, anybody can do give anybody a meal. That's not what counts. What counts is how you make that individual feel and to make sure that you're actually providing services that are gonna help them. Not for us to pat ourselves in the back, but for the people that we're actually doing it for. Welcome back everybody. We're here at POTS, part of the solution. And now we're going to be talking to Tina, who's been here for a long time. Tina's one of the happiest people that you see here at POTS when you come and visit. So, Aww, thank so, you. Tina, thank you. So Tina, tell us what you do here and how long you've been here. Uh, well, I've been affiliated with POTS on many different levels. I've been here uh, 26 years now. Um, I'm actually the senior program manager, so I oversee both feeding programs and the day-to-day -day services. So you've been here for 26 years? Yes. That's, that, you know, that it's that's amazing um, because you're incredibly positive and that says a lot about what it's like to be here, I think. Yes, it has a lot to do with the culture of the organization, what we're yeah. doing, what we stand for, um, and how we deliver services. And my introduction to the organization was a family in need. And that was where my adventure kind of like launched off that what they were doing for my family was something that mm -hmm. I wanted to make sure for the rest of my life was what I was going to be doing for the people in my community. That's wonderful. How old were you when you I was actually, made that decision? <laughs> that 12. I was um, 11 when I first came to the organization. Oh. And actually back then, uh, my mom would bring me and my um, four other brothers. And we actually didn't know it was a soup kitchen. We actually, we used to tell her, like, you're taking us to the restaurant, to the right? Restaurant. Yeah. Um, it wasn't until one day I asked for a job and they said, sure, come Saturday. And I came in and I was excited. Here I am, like 12 years old, thinking, oh, I have a job. Um, and that's when it all clicked in that this was free, that yes, my family was struggling. That's huh. when they explained to me who they were. And it was the people back then that really cultivated me. And it wasn't just about the meal. It was they took care of you. They made sure of you. They asked you certain questions. And it was in such a dignified way. They didn't make it's you wonderful. feel, you know, uh, you wasn't embarrassed to be on a line. Right. Or, and that's what really drew me to the organization, as well as all the transition that the organization really looked into the community and really asked everybody coming in, like, what is it that you need? Mm -hmm. What is it that we're not providing? A lot of people provide things, but they really don't get to the core of the population right. that's coming in. And yeah. that's a response that, for me, it's like, hands down, I want to be a part of it. That's wonderful. And, and you know, everybody has said that. And I, I said to somebody that this organization is so unique, I think, because mm -hmm. of that, because there's the sense that People know what they need. Mm -hmm. And I think this is something that, that when we talk about people in need, mm -hmm. oftentimes the language isn't about, it's about what can we do mm -hmm. for you rather than what do you need that you know you need that mm -hmm. we can help you get. Exactly. As well as like anybody talking into poverty, they automatically start making stipulations on what an individual kind of needs to get out of poverty. And everybody's different. Everybody's right. situation, everybody's level. So POTS is one of those fortunate places where we're going to meet you wherever it is that you're at, whether it's at the lowest, at the medium, at the mm -hmm. top. Do you need us for a year? Do you need us for two months? Do you need us five years? And we're going to be here for you. So what has kept you here? Is it that? Is it? Uh, for me, it's the spirit of the organization, mm. the core values, um, the mission, and the fact that we're open to all. When uh, I've looked at other nonprofits, there's usually a four focus on a certain population, only single mothers and children mm. or only seniors or only. And POTS is open to like all. And that to me is like, hands down um yeah, yeah. It's, it, it's great it's it keeps me here it also keeps me motivated i still live in the community i was going to ask people. you if you still lived in the neighborhood every day i'm going to run into so i'm not only right. working at pots i live with the same community that comes here so yeah. i'm grocery shopping with them we're going to the same barbers everybody there's quite a few clients that will come in and have known me my whole time here 
and it's it, it's nice. Yeah, yeah, that's it. And you've gone through a lot of tra- transitions in terms of moving into this new space. Yes. And so what do you want for the organization? What do you want in terms of what's next? What happens to Potsdam? Well, what happens next is to continue to build on what we already have, right? To continue to listen to what's coming through the door and what are the little gaps that we currently cannot help with. So we uh-huh. have employment, but we want to branch out a little further, um, continuing to build on those expanded services, right? We want to right. be able to be available for all multiple, but also get deep at the core, which might mean servicing a little bit less through those services, but really being able to move people through their transition and getting them to their fullest potential wherever they want to go. And do you see more opportunities because the Bronx is going through changes? I mean, that's a a double-edged sword, I guess, because yes, it's going through changes, but is it going through changes for lots of people or... But it is especially uh, is it's definitely for this particular community has faced a lot, a lot of challenges with every with those changes has came people being forced out of their homes and having to double up, losing jobs, not being able to go back to school. So though that has impacted a lot of the people. So we need to make sure to keep building on that and letting people know that we are here and you don't need to move out. We have to find a way, but the answer is in moving to another community. This is your community. And as you work towards giving people opportunities for jobs, I'm sure you're looking at what jobs will be available that maybe previously weren't available here. Yes. So it's really also helping people connect a uh, a plan. It's just not about the mm. job. When you're in an urgency and you're facing financial, you're you're just very desperate. Right. Um, so it's helping them also transition and giving them the other little band-aids that can leave them so that they can really concentrate on where are you going to be a year or two or three. Mm-hmm. It's just not about getting you that minimum wage job. Right. And that's that's a standstill. It's also looking at the children in the household, making sure they're getting the best education possible. It's what is yes. dad doing, mom doing, grandma doing. How as a whole do we support a whole household versus one person? And it's about what's the next job? Exactly. What's the job that that keeps you going? Yeah. Not just the, the low-wage job and then another low-wage job. Right. So, it's the milestones. Yeah. So do you think you'll be working with workforce development as that grows? Is that something you want to get into? Uh, I love to connect people. Uh, my forte is more like the fast speed. What are we doing? Be building relationships. Um, I would rather my colleagues sit down and do more of that tea is because of my background and where I came from. It's hard. I take on people's um, stories and I take them yeah. home. So for me, I rather yeah, like enjoy tough. your yeah. meal. Yeah. Uh, okay. <laughs> you need a shower. Okay. Oh, yeah. clothing. Okay. And let somebody else more deal on that aspect yeah. who also has the skill set, yeah. right? But that's a great thing to know about yourself. Oh, yeah. I learned it at POTS. Yeah, that's (laughs) terrific. Tina, thank you so much. That's all we have time for with you. I'm sorry. Thank you so much. Thank you for everything. Thank you. Thanks so much for coming with us to POTS and seeing the wonderful work that they do. If you've missed any part of the show or you want to watch it again, just go on bronxnet.tv and look for Mission BX, and you'll see other shows about wonderful nonprofits here in the Bronx. Join us next month when we go to visit somebody else doing great work here. Yeah.